Hi friends, welcome back to our craft and cookie time. And today we're going to be doing a craft and about the ocean. And our cookie is also going to be ocean themed. I have been missing going to the ocean. I'm sure you have too. And that's why I decided to choose this theme for today. I was going through my seashells and just kind of going over the memories of the ocean. And I want to share some of them with you. This is just a little bit of my collection. And I collect sand dollars. Do you collect seashells? I bet you collect seashells when you go to the ocean. If you do, ask a grown up if you can write in the comment section what kind of seashells you like to collect. But I collect sand dollars. My family and myself, whenever we go to the ocean, we try to look for these and we bring them back if they're nice and whole and add them to our collection. I just love the way they look. And on the inside, you can hear it shaking. And on the inside, if one is broken, you can see that there's little tiny um, pieces of shell that actually are shaped like, um, like a seagull or a bird. They're very pretty to look at. And I just love them. They're just beautiful. And I also have some sea glass. Look at that color. It matches my nail polish color. Look how thick that is. And who knows how many years it's spent in the ocean, just tossing and turning with the water and the rocks and the sand and getting all polished and smooth. And I always like to make up stories about the treasures that I find. Maybe this is from a window in a palace far, far away and it washed up on our shore. Yeah, maybe a prince or a princess was looking out the window. Isn't that pretty? This one's interesting too. This came from a bottle. Who knows where it came from? And it washed up on our shore after getting all nice and smooth. Maybe it came from a land far, far away. Someone's having a picnic down at the beach and they didn't throw their trash away and we ended up with it on our shore. And we have some like this. And this one you can hold up to your ear if you're really quiet. You can hear the ocean waves. So those are just some of them that I have. And to go along with my little collection, I thought I would read you a story about the ocean about seashells. It is called Shells and Jumping Jack Press gave us permission to read this book and it's written by Janet Lawler. And um, I got to talk to her and she's an amazing author, very sweet, and she's super excited that we get to share this book with you. So get cozy and let's have a, sh have a story. And it's a pop-up book and it's called Shells. Pop-up book of wonder. Shells glimmer in summer sunshine. They inspire curiosity and wonder. And throughout the book, we're gonna have all these little teeny tiny tabs, and I don't know if I'll be able to see them all because of my angle, but I'll get to as many as I can. A shell found on a beach is the hard outer covering left after an ocean animal dies or moves out. Some beach sand is made of tiny bits of shell. The entire beach is made of the shell. Calcium is the substance that makes most seashells hard. Just like on the outside of an egg, that's kind of that calcium. And that's why it's all nice and hard. The varying sizes, shapes, and colors delight and intrigue. Is that beautiful? What do you see in there? kinds of different seashells. So one over here, a little tab, and it says snail shell spiral in many sizes and colors. Look at this one. Beneath the waves, animals are protected by shells. And there is a little crab down here 
underneath his shell, it says a hermit crab protects its soft body by moving into an empty shell. And we had one of those in here, didn't we? So a long time ago, this shell, it had a little crab on the inside. And then it moved out and got a different home. Oh, here's some over here too. Some shells blend in with sand, rocks, and plants to help the animal hide. Decorated crabs, they attach live plants or animals to their shells for camouflage. Very, very smart. Look at this page. Look at the turtle. These hard coverings, they don't always provide safety from predators. So the sea turtle is considered a predator. And this fish up here is a grouper fish. And grouper fish have crushing teeth. They're actually plates, crushing teeth plates for eating shelled animals such as crabs. You see how they kind of move back and forth. And here's a sea turtle, and he has powerful jaw muscles. And that helps some sea turtles eat clams, crabs, and crunches. Vibrant coral reefs showcase many shells. Reefs are formed as shellac coverings in case tiny animals called coral polyps. Coral reefs are at risk of destruction by climate change, fishing, pollution, and other causes. That's why it's so important that we take care of our ocean. It's really pretty. Sometimes a surprise glistens inside. Only one in about every 10,000 oyster in the wild contain a pearl. Let me see the pearl right here. Pearls are made when an oyster forms layers of hard matter over injured tissues or an irritant. The last one says a pearl found inside a giant clam in the Philippines weighed 75 pounds. 75 pounds. That's probably more than what you weigh. And our last page. From sandy shore to deep ocean floor, shells fascinate. What do you see on this? I see there's Nemo and a blue tang like the one at the library. And we'll be back there soon so you can visit your friends. And there's a sea turtle, starfish, some sea urchins. It's very beautiful. All right, my friends, thank you for listening to the story. Now, I am going to um, get everything prepared here so we can have our craft, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Everything's all set up, and we're ready to do our craft. And today what we're going to make is an ocean in a bottle. So what you're going to need for your craft today is something to definitely cover your work surface because you are working with food coloring. You are going to need some baby oil, mineral oil, something like that. Baby oil is made from mineral oil, but you want your oil to be clear. You're going to need a good amount of water, um, some glitter if you'd like. You don't have to put glitter in your bottle, but it's pretty. A funnel, some blue food coloring, and um, a plastic bottle. You can use a soda bottle that's plastic, like the two liter bottles. Um, I also have this one that my tea comes in, and so I'm gonna be using this one because it's a nice big size. And also, if your grown up has a glue gun, you can ask them once your project is finished to put a little glue on the cap and seal it, but they would need to do that because you're working with a hot glue gun. So that's for the grown up to do. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. You can also use just a, a plastic drinking bottle. That's fine. It's just that this has ridges on it. So it kind of interferes with the whole effect of the water and the oil, but it's 
what you have, that's totally fine too. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is take your funnel and pour water. You want it to go about halfway up your bottle. And every once in a while, just, oops, see that's why I have the plastic down here. Every once in a while, lift the water up so that what is caught in the funnel can make its way down into the bottle. And that's a good amount. It's about halfway up. Now we're going to put in our food coloring. So we're going to put in a few drops of blue. Ooh, isn't that pretty already? I have food coloring all over me. And give this a good shake. Now at this point, you can add some glitter. You can add some little sea creatures, some shells, beads, if you'd like to. You don't have to, it's up to you. I am going to pour in a few shakes of glitter. over my hands and add the mineral oil and the mineral oil will not combine with the food coloring it's also not going to combine with the water so it's going to give us a nice separation and you want this to go almost all the way to the top because you do want to have room so that you move it back and forth and you can have an effect of it moving back and forth Take your lid, and at this point, this is where your grown-up, if you'd like, can put the hot glue on the inside of your lid and seal it up. Or you could just twist it on really, really, really tight. And then what you have is your ocean in the bottle. And you can pretend like this is the waves. Isn't that pretty? And it has a nice swirly effect. So when you're missing the ocean, you can just pick up your ocean in a bottle that's in your room. And look at it. think about how you will be down there pretty soon. You like that? I like it. It's pretty mesmerizing to you. You can actually sit here and look at this for quite a while. It's so pretty. All right, my friends, I am going to go wash my hands by singing the happy birthday song two times, and then we will get busy making some cookies. All right, friends, I'm back. Hands are all washed and clean, even though they're stained with the food coloring from our craft. So we are going to make some sand dollar cookies today. So what you're going to need is the recipe that we used last week. It's the same recipe that we're using today. And I will put that link in um, the description box below. If you don't want to make homemade cookies, you can go ahead and purchase the already pre-made sugar cookie. It comes in a roll at the grocery store if you can find it. But this recipe, like I said last week, it only takes like 10 minutes to make and it's super, super easy. And it's always fun. It's always fun just making homemade cookies. Now, this recipe, I did adjust it a little bit and I put in some almond extract and um, it just gives it a really nice flavor. So, your hands are all nice and clean. Let me show you what you're going to need. You're going to need your cookie dough. You're also going to need about a half a cup of sugar, some cinnamon, some sunflower seeds or sliced almonds, depending upon your choice. A um, nice sized Ziploc bag, a tray so you can work on cutting board, and of course, a cookie sheet. And you'll need to set 
your oven for about for um, 375 degrees and it takes about eight to ten minutes for these to cook and that's something that your grown-up is going to have to do this is just a family project so what you do is you start out by filling up your bag with your cinnamon I mean sugar and your cinnamon so there's a half a cup of sugar and put in as much cinnamon as you want to your liking and I just kind of go by color my family really likes cinnamon, so I'm looking at this and thinking it's probably, that's about one tablespoon, add a little bit more. So maybe like one and a half tablespoons. I start with one tablespoon and then adjust it. Kind of get a good shape. And this is going to make the sand dollars look like it's covered in sand. Oh, it smells so good already. Love the smell of cinnamon. So now you start making your cookies. And I have a helper over here. You can reach in there and start making cookies. And you're going to put them into the bag once they're rolled up into about that size of a ball. And if you are making these cookies, the cookie dough, and you get sidetracked, maybe, you know, there's a good movie on TV, or there's a book that you want to read, maybe you want to go play with your brother or sister, and it's just not the right time to roll these cookies up, you can go ahead and stick the cookie dough in the fridge and it will keep. It's going to get hard because it has a high content of butter. So after it is pretty, pretty hard and you're ready to work with it, go ahead and pop it in the microwave. Ask your grown up to do that for like maybe 30 seconds to a minute and it's going to get pliable. So you can start working with it and forming your little cookies. And this cookie recipe is something that you can make very personal. So if you were making your cookies, and you decide, you know what? Along with the cinnamon, I would also like to add a little bit of caramel. So what you can do is take your cookie dough and use half, put a little piece of caramel in there, maybe a caramel chip or um, one of those little teeny tiny caramel cubes that you use around Halloween to make the uh, caramel apples. Cut some of those in quarters and put a little bit of caramel in here. And then put the other part on top. Seal it all up. And then when it cooks, that caramel will melt. And when you bite into it, you have a nice caramel surprise. Doesn't that sound tasty? And you just keep rolling these and rolling these until you get the entire bowl rolled up. And I think we're gonna stop here because we need to show them what else they need to do. So, seal it up. And this is the fun part. <laughs> so you give it a nice gentle shake. You don't want to do it vigorously because then your cookies will break apart. You want to cover your cookies with that cinnamon and sugar. There we go. And then, Pull them out of the bag and start putting them on your cookie sheet. And they do spread out a little bit, so you want to give them some room. I'd say maybe a good two, two and a half, three inches apart. Don't eat that. Just pop those on there. Mm, they smell so good. I think you guys are really gonna like this, this cookie recipe. Some they kind of look like donut holes at this point. It's over there to help you out. And then at this point, this is what they look like. And now you're going to take your thumb, and I don't know if you've ever made thumbprint cookies around the holidays, but that's basically what you're doing. So you just press down on your cookie. You don't want to flatten it out all the way, but
but you do want to make it get a little bit flat. And if it has some cracks around the side, that's okay. You can always push them in a little bit if you want, but it's okay if there's some little cracks. Because seashells do have cracks sometimes, don't they? We're not going for perfection here. We're just having fun and making cookies. And this is a great, great thing to do with the little ones. They love doing this with the cookies. The fun part too is afterwards you get to have a snack with your family and you get to tell them that you made these. All right, then the next step is you take your almonds or your sunflower seeds, and I'm using sunflower seeds. I'm gonna wipe my hands off here and put a few out on my tray. And these are just roasted, unsalted, thank you, roasted, unsalted um, sunflower seeds. And when you look at a sand dollar, they don't have one here, but they have about five. Um, so they look like teardrops, five little teardrop shapes on the top of the sand dollar. So you're going to put three, four, five. Thank you, yeah, I like that. Let me hold this one up so that they can see it. And you press those in to the top so you have a sand dollar cookie. And you just keep doing that for the rest of your cookies. And I'm gonna set these over here for my assistant came up in. And then you pop them in the oven. Your grown up pops them in the oven, 375 for about eight to 10 minutes. Watch them carefully because it does have the cinnamon and the sugar. And of course that burns very easily in the oven. So I would go with the, um, check them after seven minutes first and then just keep your eye on them towards the eight, nine mark, nine, eight or nine minute mark. And then once you are done and they're ready to pull out, you have sand dollar cookies. And this is what they look like. And they smell so good because they have the cinnamon and the sugar on top and the almond flavoring on the inside. There you go. And it's great with a cup of almond milk or regular milk or even a glass of water, whatever you like to have, a cup of tea. It's just fantastic. All right, my friends, that is our cookie recipe for today, along with our craft and a little story. I hope you enjoyed today and I will see you very soon. Bye.